Welcome to William Buck's Investment Series Residential Property. I'm Adrian Frinsdall, Director at uh, William Buck and Head of our Wealth Advisory. And today I'm with the Managing Director of Turner Real Estate, Lockie Turner. Welcome, Lockie. Thank you very much, Adrian. So, Lockie, uh, residential property has certainly had a uh, booming few years and it's one mm. of the favourite investments for many of our uh, clients. Mm. Yes. Where do you see the market uh, at the moment? Well, we've had some uh, extraordinary growth, Adrian. Um, so last financial year on average for South Australia, it was up around uh, the 22% mark. And for the first quarter um, as well, so far this year, it's looking like it's gonna be seven, seven or eight, um, seven or eight percent. So um, growth is still very strong. And out of all of uh, the capital cities in Australia, um, Adelaide is uh, the strongest performing one still at the moment. And um, there are a couple of reasons for that. We're still the lowest median house price uh, in Australia. Um, we've got net migration uh, inflow, and there's still a really um, there is still a shortage of um, houses for sale, so that is increasing the demand. What sort of things would you advise people to look for when looking for investment property? Well, ideally, the best thing to do is to really buy a house with land, because um, land is the only um, appreciating part of a property. Um, so ideally, if you can do that, um, and particularly if you've got a house that you can do a, a division with, so the ability to be able to create a second title is ideal. Yep. Um, and of course, location, and what are the merits of the location? Well, it's got to be in an area where rent yields are in demand and high, um, and you're around infrastructure, you know, schools, hospitals, where people are easily uh, in, um, employed and things like that. Um, I mean, at the moment, if we're looking at what's happening in South Australia, uh, moving down the coastal region and down uh, the Flurio part of Adelaide, that is uh, performing very, very strongly. And we're landlocked down there because once you reach Selix Beach, that's, the, um, that's it. Uh, you, you, you reach the hills and then the next township's a little town called Maponga. So there's only so far we can go and we're seeing a lot of really, really good um, improving property prices down in that part of the world and probably a very good place to invest as well, actually. So when you're looking at investing compared to owning your own home, is there a difference that people should look out for? Well, I think, you know, uh, the fundamentals of what um, I described just then are, um, are important because you want it to be a home, but you want it to be an investment at the same time. I think the main difference between buying an investment and a home for yourself is just probably more emotive. You're probably going to look a bit harder at the property if it's for you and the way you're going to live there. and where you want to live. I think an investment, you've got to look more at, more at the fundamentals and whether it's got you know, uh, the growth that you need and the yield that you need and perhaps the age of the building can have a bearing as well because if, it, if it's an older property, maintenance and upkeep might be a bit more if it's an investment. Um, but you've got to weigh that up with land and if you buy a little bit further out with an old house on it, but you can do a land division in five years time, you've got to show where some patience around that, some growth and it might be worth holding a property that needs a bit more maintenance in, uh, in that regard. Right, so that, that dream, the Australian dream, which used to be subdivided property, um, keep mm. a second title, that's still something that Australian investors can do? Or is property prices yeah. have risen too much? Well, look, I um, still think uh, Australia's a big wide land and um, there's still a lot of urban sprawl and we are still seeing the ability to do that and buy blocks pretty uh, at a fairly um, affordable level, Adrian. So it is still possible. Um, I think in the more metropolitan areas that are more established, those blocks of lands are very expensive and they're becoming much harder to find. Yep. So people do tend to sort of buy further south and north uh, in particular. We're seeing a massive surge in interest in property in the hills just for affordability and seeing, being able to have that lifestyle aspect and, yep. not, and more land and not have to pay an absolute fortune for it. So the hills, Adelaide Hills are performing very strongly as well. Fantastic. Um, uh, Former colleague of mine, she's retired, probably uh, watching this uh, video, <laughs> used to tell my clients' children to buy the house that they'll be in in 10 years' time, which I always mm. thought was interesting advice, mm. i.e. spend more than what they could afford. What do you think of that uh, type of comment? Well, I, I certainly think it's got um, uh, yeah, that's a merit for sure. Um, I think trying to get into the property market is the key. And um, I think everyone should do their best to do that. And, and it is a commitment to do that. You've really got to be a strict saver. Um, and, but also not only sort of buying in advance, Adrian, but um, also perhaps just buying a property. And it might not be the one that you want to live in in, in a decade. It might just be the fact you bought a property. You might never live in it, but, yep. but you bought a house, so you're in the property market. 
Yes. And, it, and, it, and, it, and it might be, you know, that you're an Eastern Suburbs person, you've always lived around Burnside, but you buy a property at Selix Beach. You know, you're never going to live there. You're probably never going to send, send, send uh, your children there, although it's a beautiful part of the world. But um, you're in the property market and you're experiencing growth. And I think that's a great idea. It's just to get into the market. And then you might sell it in five years' time. You make 50 or 100,000 or more on it. And then you might be able to sort of make uh, the step into the property that you would rather be in. So, longer term. So that's the strategy, you think, for younger people? Because there's a lot of commentary that property is just getting unaffordable for first-time buyers. Well, it's a serious issue um, and there's no real answer to it, really. Um, but I think what I observe in a lot of young people is that they are quite aspirational about owning the property that they ultimately want to be in and that being the first one that they buy. Yeah. So it's sort of alluding to what I just mentioned. It's just about um, letting go of the shackles of those thoughts a little bit and just getting into the property market is probably more important and not standing by and waiting for the right property to come up or hoping the market's going to come down or something like that. So, and key to that is to getting the finance sorted out is the very, very first step. Work out where your budget lies yep. and just buy in the property market somewhere. And there's still plenty of affordability around. It just might not be in the areas people want, but those areas will increase in value, no doubt. Well, that leads me to the last question. Have you got any tips for buying and selling? Obviously, you see more of it than any of us do. But what are the sort of things you think we should look at? Well, certainly, uh, if we start with selling, um, Adrian, I think there's uh, some fundamental rules for the seller to get the best price, particularly in this market. We're seeing an unprecedented market at the moment. We're obviously seeing some um, incredible growth. And it can be um, the temptation to sell to the neighbour or sell to a friend or selling to family is fair enough. You've got to look after your family. But generally speaking, um, you should tell the whole world about your property um, and market it widely and build a competitive situation. That is just key. Um, and I think if you're um, going to do that or when you do that um, and right before you tell the whole world about it and put it online and all the major portals, you really should get it ready for sale as well. So just spend a little bit of time just making sure the presentation's ideal and um, we can help with that. We've got lots of people in all of uh, the trades at our company because of all the properties we manage. So we've got all those people that are out of disposal and uh, to help with those sort of th sorts of things and 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 there's some stylists as well once you sort of get all the main work done. So that would be the probably the two key things is to get it ready for market. Yep. Well presented. Just 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 make sure there's no um, maintenance issues and then make sure you market it. So that'd be two the, the two key things for selling. Buying's, um, buying's interesting these days, because I've been doing this 18 years, and when I started uh, properties, uh, there was a black and white sketch at the front of the property, and then it was in the real estate section on a Saturday. Um, and that's how we used to market properties, and so everyone would have to come to the open. You wouldn't start to have your open times till probably midday onwards, Adrian, because everyone had to wake up, buy the paper, and read it and see the time. So you generally have your first opens, uh, particularly if it was a new release from midday onwards. So now everything is online, um, and so the best thing to do is to set up alerts on the major portals. Realestate.com.au has got the biggest market share in South Australia, and they do have the ability to do that, is to set up an alert for your favourite suburbs and types of property. Um, and that's instant, so as soon as it goes on their portal, you get an email in your inbox, so that'd be a key thing. And you need to do these things now, because buyers, um, other buyers that you are competing against in the market are doing it. Yep. And they're there, that very first open and sometimes offering on the spot. And that's what we're seeing a lot of. The other sort of, um, uh, well, I guess you call it a trend, but I think it's here to stay. Um, agents like ours are becoming much more sophisticated with their CRMs and their own websites. So when we launch a property for sale, we always put it on uh, the Turner website first. And we've got over... 16,000 registered buyers and all of our landlords and investors and so they always goes through that system first and if we don't have an offer or um, well if we do get an offer and it's at a level that the owner is happy with we sometimes do sell them but then we'll go to realestate.com that I use a second step so the other tip is just to make sure that if you're a buyer you're registering as a buyer with certain um, agencies like Turner perhaps um, Tooth and IC and Harris and some of the big ones that have sort of got a, their systems are a bit more uh, sophisticated. So we're seeing a lot more properties selling off the agents' portals before they're reaching even the major portals, which is a big change. Fantastic. 
Well, Lockie, that's uh, that's fantastic. You know, Turner Real Estate's been around uh, multiple decades. Uh, Thirty years last year, I think. So yeah, so, started by Dad, Robin. Yeah, so. Robin, uh, Robin Turner is well yeah. known to myself. And uh, yeah, well, he um, he's a client. So fantastic. So uh, we'd like to thank you very much, and uh, hopefully the residential market, because we're all involved in that in some way, mm. keeps on uh, powering on. Yeah, well, that's it. Yeah, well, I. Wish everyone the best in it, you know, the buyers and the people looking for houses to rent. And um, yeah, it's a bit of a tough one for them at the moment, but if, but if you own property, it's certainly the better position to be in. Fantastic.